Hey guys, what's up? Mario here, otherwise known as Y2M on the interwebs, and welcome to Thoughts, the July 2011 edition. Even though it's already August. Procrastination there, folks, sorry. Just wanted to talk about two movies today, or two movies that I already saw that came out uh, a little bit back, but were pretty awesome. Now, first one, well, let me give you a hint. I'm here with my wand. It's all I need. This is my wand right here. Yeah. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. That's a mouthful. So, I went and checked it out. Now, I'm not as big into Harry Potter as a good chunk of my friendos is. Not a bad thing. They could like worse things. Like Twilight! But... Uh, you know, I'm not into it as they are, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it is. Deadly Hallows Part 1, uh, was slow and a snooze fest. But that was because they wisely decided to put the build-up and, and slow parts all in one movie. Which both was kind of good and bad. So that way they got straight to the nitty-gritty in Part 2. Here we see the conclusion of the magnificent trio that you all know and love between Hermione, Ron, and Harry. Any romances that you had that she already knew were coming or happening or whatever, well, they do. And for those of you that have never read the books, you're going to be in for some surprises. I don't want to really spoil much. The effects were great. The characters were great. We've seen these kids grow up. We've seen these kids uh, basically uh, since they were actual kids. I mean, they're all grown now. But, you know, they're just as awesome. And um, honestly, it, it uh, now that you look back on it, you just don't see anyone else being Harry or Ron or Hermione. Neville really, really was awesome in this, you know, the little kid that was always useless and dorky, yeah, he really showed his stuff. I really enjoyed it, you know, I mean, up until two and a half years ago, I was pretty much uh, ignorant of the Potter mythos. For a while I called Dumbledore Gandalf, I'm like, wait, Gandalf? I remember when I saw um, The Prisoner of Azkaban and I was like, wait a minute, Gandalf's in this movie? What the hell? Uh, I know. I know. I just pissed off a lot of you. But that's what happened. Deal with it. Live with it. And also know that uh, I'm not like that anymore. So, so it was a good movie. But, you know, I give it two ones up. Right, that was stupid. I'm sorry. But the one that I wanted to see, the one that I couldn't wait to see, the one that I'm so glad I saw, let me give you a hint. Wait, I, I need to give you a clue as to which movie I saw, hmm. Oh, shit, America! <laughs> that was really dorky of me. Anyway, but yeah, I went to go see Captain America, as anybody that knows me knows that I would see that. I mean, come on, that was kind of a given. Uh, I was a little worried. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people were with the fact that Chris Evans was playing the, the lead uh, of Steve Rogers' Captain America, but... You know, I mean, we, we all saw him. We all know him still as Johnny Storm, the Human Torch in Fantastic Four. And uh, it was kind of kind of a hard sell. Well, I am pleased to let you know that he delivered. I'm speechless. I'm surprised that uh, Chris Evans could do a loud, brash, sort of an arrogant Jack Cole like Johnny Storm and become the quiet, stern, um, altruistic... Uh, Steve Rogers, um, and, and, and by the way, Captain America fans, I'm one of them by the way, um, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, they nail the character of Steve Rogers. This is pretty, pretty much his origin. And while they do, like with other Marvel movies, they took a couple of liberties with, you know, there's a couple of things different, but overall the mythos is intact. And that should make you happy. And, and, and Basically, once we found out why Steve Rogers decided to go forward, why he even wanted to enlist so much and do serve his country and all that stuff, the re I won't spoil it to you, but the reason he gives for why he does it pretty much made my heart grow three sizes that day. And basically, yep, that's exactly what Steve Rogers would say. Nailed it. You know, Chris Evans wasn't exactly a surefire uh, uh, bet in terms of nailing Steve Rogers. Like the way... Uh, Robert Downey Jr. was with Tony Stark, but I'm I'm happy to report he nailed it, and the movie was fantastic. 
Uh, they they nailed the period. I mean, they took a couple of liberties with Hydra. Um, it's it. Somebody said it best. It's a world. It's it's a movie that really doesn't have anything to do with World War II, even though it takes place in the era of World War II. It, it's not a bad thing. I can just, I can see why people wanted to see more actual Nazis in it, but you get what you get, and it's good. And also, Red Skull. Nailed it. Nailed it. Agent Smith as Red Skull. Perfect choice. In fact, now that I read Captain America comics, if I ever see the Red Skull, that's who I'm going to picture. That's his voice I'm going to picture. Another fear that people had was uh, that uh, Captain America was basically just a uh, expensive uh, trailer for the Avengers. That's not true. It, I would say just about every minute of the movie is devoted to Captain America and maybe the last five minutes we get to the greater Marvel movie universe. So that's good. And, and once again, being that it's a Marvel movie, stay after the credits. Trust me, you won't regret it. America! Anyway, if you haven't seen either movie, do so now. As for recommendations, I'm normally I try to give you a current graphic novel recommendation. Being that it's July, just play along. It's Captain America month. Still play along. I'm going to recommend some Captain America graphic novels. Now, obviously the, the, the series, the current run with Ed Brubaker, is fantastic. You want to stick with that. The, they, he recently started uh, a new volume, a new run of Captain America, and at first I thought, you know, it was kind of a cheap way to promote the movie, a little bit of a cop-out, but no, it's actually, the new Captain America number one is fantastic. It's it's great because it gives established fans uh, a whole new story with people we know, and it's awesome. At the same time, it introduces new readers to a whole new storyline without having to know what happened before. But, in case you do want to know what happened before, might I suggest the Captain America Omnibuses. Volume 1 of, I guess now, the old run of Captain America. This is the one you want to get first, because this one is sounds just Steve Rogers and why he's awesome. Because you see, Captain America kind of sucked as a series. Arguably, uh, before Brubaker took over, he made it. He made him relevant and cool again. And, and honestly, I, I haven't been able to stop reading this. Volume 2, uh, which covers the death of Captain America. You know what happened there. I mean, the news covered it enough. And how Bucky came back from the, pretty much from the dead and became... The new Captain America. It read it, check it out. It was a really good storyline. I know a lot of people were like, "Well, Steve Rogers should stay Captain America no matter what." But you know what? I didn't mind Bucky being Captain America. Honestly, he was fantastic. Anyway, which leads us to the third omnibus that's out there: Captain America Lives, Volume Three, which basically continues the adventures of Bucky Cap, as I call him, and. It basically leads up to Captain America Reborn, where Steve Rogers comes back. But will the Red Skull have something to say about it? I'm not going to spoil anything for you, I'm, but I am going to highly recommend all three. Try to get all three. You're going to love, you're going to fall in love with, it, with this series instantly. I mean, trust me, I did. Let's see, what else is there? So, in terms of gaming, it's kind of a drought right now. Uh, next month, though, or rather in September, <clears throat> We have Warhammer 40k, Space Marine coming out, and Gears of War 3. Can't wait for that because I have them both reserved. I'll talk more about them later. Also, Bungie, 20th anniversary um, is going on right now. So, uh, I'm not going to say much here. Keep an eye out for a vlog I, where I will cover Bungie and give them their justice because honestly, Bungie has literally dominated the last 10 years of my life in terms of gaming. Well, other than that, I have nothing more to say. So... You have a good one. Thanks for pretending that it's still July, even though it's technically August, but whatever. And I will hopefully be better in giving you the next Thoughts vlog on time. Other than that, good night, good luck. Live Nerdcore America! <laughs> Y2MF.